Hey guys, we'll be looking at two merit questions and one achieved question. So the two merits are in algebra and integration. That's this episode today. So welcome and let's get started. So guys, this particular one, you've actually got to, you've got to actually rear, well not rearrange it, make that whatever's inside the bracket, that part there you've got to actually simplify it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is obviously when I look at I7, I want to actually get rid of I7. I7 I could write it as I squared times I squared times I squared times I. Is that alright? This is just your basic um, index expressions. So from here I know that I squared is negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times I. So if I simplify this I can say I to the power of 7 is actually equal to negative I. Is that okay so far? So then what I've done is in the bracket, I've replaced 4i7 with 4 times negative i minus i and the whole thing divided by 1 plus 2i squared. Okay, keep going. I'm going to get 4 times negative i is negative 4i. So negative 4i minus i is negative 5i divided by 1 plus 2i squared. Okay. Is that alright so far? So if anything is squared, I can do this. Negative 5i over 1 plus 2i multiplied by negative 5i over 1 plus 2i. So when I do this, the numerator is going to become negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 25i squared. And the denominator, expanding quadratics, so I'm going to have 1 plus 2i plus 2i plus 4i squared. Is that okay? Still going. I've got i squared is negative 1. And then in the denominator, I have 1 plus 4i plus 4 times i squared, which is also negative 1. Still going. I've got negative 25 divided by negative 3 plus 4i. Is that okay so far? Okay, I'm still not done because all I've done is um, I've just ex like expanded that bracket out from a, um, from a power to the power of 2 to a single entity. So at this point, I need to multiply it by the conjugate. You guys remember this? So we multiply by negative 3 minus 4i and the numerator by also negative 3 minus 4i. When we do this, we end up with 75 plus 100i divided by, well, when I do that, negative 3, can I do this real quickly? So it's going to be 9 minus 16i squared. Sorry? Yep, doing the i squared again. I've got 75 plus 100i divided by 9 minus 16 times negative 1, which means I've got 75 plus 100i divided by 25, because negative 16 and negative 1 is positive 16, 16 and 9 is 25. So, which means my final answer is going to be 75 over 25 plus 100 over 25i, and what I have is 3 plus 4i. So my values for a and b, well there's my value for a, a equals 3 and b equals to 4. Questions? Okay, now I think just in terms of, um, I'll just check the schedule, hold on. So basically for merit, oi, that's your merit right there and I think where does it say for achieved as are? Is it third line? Uh, is that negative 25 over negative 3 plus 4i? Yeah. Yep. So basically, if you get up to here, you're looking at an achieved. Okay? Cool. On to the next question. So this was uh, an achieved question from last year as well. So first thing they're asking is find the values of x such that the gradient is equal to 0. So I need to differentiate it first. Uh, f of so what what am I using here quotient rule okay I always like doing this I'm gonna put f as x 
g as e to the power of 3x, which means f dash is 1, g dash is 3, 3x. So I can write y dash is equal to f dash g minus f g dash over g squared. Okay, so working this out, I've got e to the power of 3x minus x times 3 times e to the power of 3x divided by e to the power of 3x squared. Okay, now it says find the values of x such that the gradient is equal to 0. So I know that y dash is equal to 0. Now, just going to kind of give you guys a bit of a hint here. If you ever get into the situations like where you have a fraction equals to 0, then all you need to prove is just the numerator should equal to 0. Okay? Because if you think about it, when I actually take the denominator to the other side and multiply by 0, I'm still going to have 0. So what I can then write as 0 equals e to the power of 3x minus uh, 3 times x e 3x. Okay? From here, I can see that e to the power of 3x, um, I can take it out as a common factor. So I have 0 equals e to the power of 3x, 1 minus 3x. Do you guys agree with that? Is that all right? Because I've just taken out the common factor, guys. The common factor in, in each of the terms is e to the power of 3x. So when I take it out, I have 1 minus 3x left over. Uh, again, 0 divided by e to the power of 3x. 1 minus 3x, so I've got 0 equals 1 minus 3x, which means rearranging it, I'm going to get 3x equals 1 and x equals 1 over 3. Questions? Okay, for this one, just differentiating it is not going to give you anything. You will actually have to solve, because um, the question is actually asking you to find the values of x, which means you must get to that point to actually get an achieved. Okay? Questions? We're good? All right, next one. So with this question, um, I know if you guys had actually watched it, um, the video for excellence edition, there was one that I went through with a similar question like this with working with areas. So what they're asking for you in this question is find an expression in terms of k for the area bounded. So basically we're looking for, for uh, an equation for this blue area here. Okay. So if we're going to write this as um, just to start off with as an integral function, it's going to be between pi over k and 0. And the curve is sine kx dx. Is that okay? So that's pretty much what we're starting out with. So I can, I'm going to start working up here. So I can say that the area, because you're trying to find the general, um, like just a generic equation in terms of k. So I can write that area equals between pi over k, 0, sine kx dx. So I need to integrate um, sine. When I integrate sine, what do I get, folks? Negative cos. Negative cos. So in this case, I'm going to get negative cos kx. But just remember that you've got to different divide by the differentiation of whatever's inside that cos function. So in this case, it's going to get divided by what? k, because k is the differentiation of kx. And that's between pi over k and 0. Is that all right? So moving on from here, now I need to substitute the values of um, whatever my limits. I've got to substitute where x is. So I've got negative cos k, and I'm going to use the first one. I'll use this one here, which is pi over k. Okay, and that's divided by k minus negative cos k times, uh, the next one is this one here, which is 0, times 0, and that's also divided by k. 
So if I start simplifying this, I'm going to get negative cos i over k minus negative cos 0 over k. Now what's cos of pi? Cos of pi, people? Is it? So cos of pi is 1. Sorry, negative 1. Is it? No. Cos of pi is 1. Negative cos of pi is negative 1. Wait, let me try and figure it out. Cos of pi is... I'm just going to draw it. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That's 2 pi. That's pi. So cos of pi is negative 1. Yeah, that's what I said. He said positive 1. It's not the same thing. <laughs> like two. What, cos of pi? Okay, hang on. We'll be right back. There's a technical difficulty. Apologies, folks. One of our members was in degrees. They're going to change it back to radians. Can you change it to radians again? And tell me what it is. I'm sorry, <laughs> we couldn't hear you. <laughs> What do you mean? It's, if, it's, if you see a pi, you work with radians, not degrees. In calculus, you always work with radians. You don't do degrees. We don't like degrees. Okay, anyway, going back to this. So we got negative cos pi is negative 1. So that's there. All right. And cos of 0? That's positive. So it's positive 1. So that's another negative 1 over k. Which means we got negative times negative is positive, which we are absolutely sure about. So it's 1 over k plus 1 over k. And our final answer is 2 over k. All right? So you get to 2 over k. That's a merit. And I think right here, this part here gets you an achieved. Just the integration. Let me. Do you want to check that? Does it say? It's what 1c. Yep. All right, guys, that's us for this session. So thank you for watching and be here for next week. Nah, kidding. Next, next session. Oh, yeah, not next week. Okay, there we go. We're done for today.